Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tough to Treat, our favorite podcast that I get to do with Erica Mello. And we get to discuss complex patients and taking a different eye and a different angle of looking at how maybe we either evaluate or treat them. In this particular podcast, I wanted to talk about a kind of a common problem that I see all the time with people complaining of just a lot of tightness in their low back. There can be many drivers to this situation, but this one particular one, although not atypical in her presentation, we actually talked about and did some different kinds of approaches between Erica and myself, talking about different ways to actually progress her interventions. I hope you enjoy it and let us know what you think. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. This is Susan Clinton and my co-host, Erica Mello. We're here with Tough to Treat. Hey, Susan. <laughs> Hi, Erica. How are you? <laughs> I'm good today. Good. I am good. Thank you. So we've been through a lot. This is like podcast number 25, I think, that we're, I, we're I know. putting down. We started this whole project a year ago. I know. It's so funny. I was looking back on it. I said, oh, my God, you know, this has been a year. And I've had a wonderful time. I oh really enjoyed goodness. it. It's been amazing. I just, I have to tell everyone that's listening out there and maybe people who are new to listening, you know, that we this whole thing started with us talking to each other about a couple of clients that we had you know, just for a different perspective, a different viewpoint. And it just turned into something that we enjoyed doing together so much that we were encouraged to put a podcast together of which neither one of us knew anything about. <laughs> so we just like dove in and did it. So, so there is something to don't let things be perfect, but just go for it. Yeah. Um, Cause here we are at episode number 25 and you know, hopefully we'll still keep going for a bit. Oh, totally. Um, yeah. So this is also a good time to maybe plug that we do have a mentoring platform coming up starting in July. And so you, those of you who are on our email list for our group email that we send out with every podcast, there's some good information in there. Check it out. Let us know your thoughts and or sign up. We'd love to work with you. Okay. Yeah. As I was telling Erica before we got on, I said, sometimes I was kind of thinking, what do I want to talk about today? And who do I want to talk about? And, and sometimes it's like, Susan, talk about the ones that you're having the trouble with. Because that's what you all want to hear is like, well, what do I struggle with? Okay, yep. so <laughs> sometimes the simplest of patients can be the most hair pulling, eye bending kind of thing that you run into. I know. So what I have with, here today is I've got a 36-year-old female who is, you know, she's a small person, petite, I guess is the word that you might want to call, very strong, very, very, very healthy individual that uh, was ha actually self-referred herself to me because she was running into some problems with some chronic low back pain. And just to give you a little background on her, she is in a position where she has to sit a lot and stoop a lot for her job. So she's got kind of, and it's not really a sedentary job. She moves and walks around a lot in between too, but she does spend a lot of time on the computer and, you know, viewing visuals and things like that and sitting in, you know, some interesting positions and having to stand and stoop and do some things as well. She is very active and has been a big exerciser, uh, loves to run, and but also felt like she needed to kind of branch her horizons out and do some different things. And so she and a few friends went to take a power yoga class. And she said that right away, immediately, she felt this chronic pull in her lower lumbar spine. So she would put her fingers both sides of L4, L5 and just kind of push in there and go, it's right in here. It's right in here. It's right in here. Yep. So, you know, everything in my, my light box starts dinging. Oh, this sounds kind of like a facet problem. Right. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. Let's see what the movement looks like. Right. But anyway, so she said that it went on for a week. Okay. And she went and had an aggressive massage, mm -hmm. thinking that she just, you know, she's one of these people. And I run into, this is kind of a conglomerate of a number of people that I run into and I see. And it's like, it's just so tight, I can't stretch it out. Oh, God. I you know. know. You know exactly what yes. I'm talking about, yes. right? And it's, they're just obsessed with, it's just so tight right in here. And they're and always constantly flexing over. I know. And those are the ones that are like, 
too flexible. <laughs> they just can't get enough, at least in my opinion, they can't get enough stretch. I'm like, oh my God, you're so flexible. No wonder you can't feel it. <laughs> right. And, and, and so as we kind of move forward, it'll be great to get your thoughts on a couple of things because I'll let you know what I saw and, and I'm looking for a, another end around um, in here with this mm -hmm. one. So she, then she went and picked up her bag. She was going to somewhere and she picked up a heavy bag off of the turnstile at the airport and noticed an immediate kind of increase of pain again in the area, a little bit more right-sided than left. And so she went on a course of NSAIDs for 10 days and no yoga for four weeks. Okay. And, and so she kind of said things settled down a little bit. So she went back to yo yoga and she could just feel the tightness. It's the tightness, the tightness, the tightness back to the same thing. And so she did another trip, had a little bit more pain, and did another course of leave. So this has kind of gone on for, yep. you know, over the course of about six months, I would say. Sorry to interrupt. Was there one particular move in yoga, or was it just the whole? That, that's a great question. And as soon as I get through her history, I'll tell ah, you. About kind okay, of sorry. About. Yeah, no, but that's exactly yeah. where we need to go, right? Okay. Everyone is like, what is it that you do that really, what do you, yeah. do you feel that tightness? Yeah. She went to an ortho MD who was told she had mild scoliosis. <laughs> okay. <Yep. laughs> right. uh, now she's got that's the be all chronic, the end all Yeah, she's got she's got chronic tightness and now she thinks she has scoliosis. Mm -hmm. So um and she's not real sure what that means. She sent her to PT yep. where they did basically, you know, kind of a quote core exercise program. She did a lot of stuff laying on her back doing, you know, with your knees bent up in the air and bringing your foot down to the mat. I think there's some fancy name like foot drops or something for those. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what the names of exercises are. You know, arms and legs. And she did some, you know, a couple of planks and she did a lot of clams. And then that was what she did. And she did it for a few weeks. And as she said, you, nothing changed. And I, so I said, so tell me kind of status now. What is happening with you? What is it that, what do you feel? She goes, it's, it's not really a pain, but it kind of is. But it feels like it needs to be stretched all the time. It feels like chronic tightness and it never changes. And I said, does it ever seem to get worse? No, because when I move around and stuff, it feels better. But then right afterwards, it gets worse again. So I said, is there any particular position in yoga that you're doing that you know, right at that moment in time, sits off those ding, ding, ding bells. And she yeah. was like, no, not really. It's just, I feel it afterwards. And so oh, afterwards, okay. Yeah, afterwards, like, you know, within 30 minutes after, after any kind of movement, it starts okay. back up again. Okay. She's been unable to discern or find a pattern. So can she sit okay? She said that she can, that it doesn't feel any different sitting or standing. So, so during, if she didn't do yoga, it would be these random pick up a you know, bag at the airport or random things that would bother her, right? Or no? Um, so that were the, those were her two pain events. Right. She had okay. Two pain events. And those were following, picking up something heavy. Okay. The she, rest of the she, time, it's been this chronic tightness that she feels uh, like she needs to chronically she always want to stretch it. Yeah. But there's no particular, besides the power yoga, there's no activity like sitting, standing, walking that makes it worse. Nope. Okay. None that, okay. She, can, none that she can identify at the time of the eval. Got it. Okay. Right? And so then um, she, she also has started doing some Pilates. Okay. She felt like, well, that would be, you know, the same as the exercises she was doing in PT. Mm -hmm. So she started doing a little bit of Pilates. She's like I said, she loves to run. She wants to be able to to do all the things she does and not have to feel this low back tightness all the time. Could she? So could she run, or did she still have that issue after running in her back? She she could run. Yes. And okay. She said she would have the issue after running. Yes. Okay. All so of those things are the same. Whatever movement activity she does made her feel better for the short term, but you know, return to the status quo within 30 minutes to an hour after the activity. Okay. So kind of interesting, you know, and, and it's interesting when I watch this, a lot of times what they do is they put their thumbs on their low back mm -hmm. and they're chronically trying to flex themselves over to, yep. you know, and while she was talking to me and, and demonstrating to me, this was the kind of thing she was doing the whole time. 
you know, was this, this you know, putting her thumbs back there and just, oh, you know, trying to like right there. I just like yep. stretch that out. I would feel so much better. What was her body? What was her body type? Was she like flexible? Was she average build? So she's was petite. She, oh, you um, mentioned that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah no, sorry, that's okay. Sorry. That's okay. Strong. She wasn't a 95 pound weakling or anything like that. I mean, she, you know, good, strong muscles, a movement stuff I'm going to get into here. I just, I basically wanted to just see her move and see what I could see first before I started looking at joint flexibility and all of that. You know, when she stood, she didn't stand with like an amazing amount of record bottom and a big carrying angle in her elbows. And so she didn't look like one of those, you know, one of the people that tend to be very hypermobile. Yeah. She looks pretty solid, okay. carries herself pretty solid. Yep. Anyway, so she, so I have her move. I have her bend over. You know me, I go to bend over first mm-hmm. and everything is fine. And I said, do you feel that? Do you, I need to know if anything increases that tightness. Mm-hmm. I know you have it all the time, but I'm looking for what increases it. Mm-hmm. And she would just say that, mm, you know, no, I feel it, but it feels good to kind of do that. It's like, okay, that's fine. Um, where she was bending was at her thoracic spine and not a whole lot happening at the hip. So most okay. of her bending was coming from above yep. and into the lumbar spine, but she wasn't getting the hip flexion that I expected her to be able to get. Okay. So, yeah. so it, was, it was more sort of just a little bit of T-spine flexion and then she was just sort of like hip hinging or not even like she wasn't, she was she getting, she wasn't even, not even 90 degrees of hip flexion. No. Okay. No. So I mean, how did she get to the floor? Yeah, she well, she doesn't. She gets to about uh, mid calf. Okay. All right, okay. but she's got a decent amount of movement. I mean, it's not yep. Yep. abnormal. She's a runner, you know. So yeah. Yeah. you know, so I wasn't, you know, I just wanted to see. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like surprised that the hips didn't flex very well. That yeah. was kind of like, hmm, okay. So then I had her do an extension maneuver, and mm-hmm. this was very interesting. She and I see this. I can't tell you how many times she stood there. It took her a second to figure it out, which is always interesting to me. It's mm-hmm. like motor control. Like, yeah. why are you having trouble? You movement person are having trouble. Exactly. Out how to go backwards. Yeah. And so she started with her head and then she would bring her upper T-spine into it and it would stop about the thoracolumbar uh, junction. Nothing huh. moved from the TL down. That stayed flat as a pancake. Hmm. And that was her extension. And I thought, okay, how does that feel? She goes, actually, it doesn't bother me at all. Really? Okay. And then she, so we did it a few times, you know, to see. And she said, well, maybe I can feel a little bit. She just really couldn't tell. Yeah. yeah. No, but I could see that there was absolutely zero movement happening there. Yeah. Yeah. And you do a lot of extensions in yoga. Yeah. You do a ton. Yeah. And in Pilates, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we, you know, we did some other things. We did some rotation and she's rotating. Okay. You know, through the upper part of her thoracic spine, there wasn't a lot of things happening in the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. She wasn't reversing her curve with rotation to the right or the left. So I was kind of, you know, starting to kind of think, okay, so something's happening here and we're just not getting closing. I'm wondering if she actually strained that facet joint so much that it's irritable and it's still irritable or if it's just gotten where the movement pattern is so easy in deflection and just not into extension, you know? And and so whatever, I'm not sure what happened that perhaps when she picked up the back, she had the irritability set in. And so her whole system took her out of extension. I don't know. So my, my, my hypothesis going in was if we can get, if I can get her lumbar spine to close better um, and we can get extension going through that system, that might take care of that chronic need to be stretching all the time. Mm-hmm. But she couldn't, when she did a forward bend, she couldn't open as well, right? Or she just wasn't, it, 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 there was no movement in the lumbar, right? The, I, the lumbar moved a little bit. You don't really oh, it did. see, yeah, okay. you know, you see the, what I would think would be an okay amount of flexion. Ah, uh, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't limited like it was in closing. Ah, the okay. The part wasn't, wasn't limited. Did you try side bending and things like that or no? We, at, we, at that did. we did, we okay. did. You could side bend a little bit, but most of it was happening up above. Uh, okay. You know, she would side bend through her thorax in the TL junction. There might be a little side bending going on down low, but it, it certainly wasn't happening in the lower, lower lumbars. Those okay. were staying like they were being kind of held in position there, you know, some sort of protective response going on. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to quit thinking about why 
<laughs> and back myself into what do I see and what do I need to do? Right. So we, I got her on the mat and we started looking at just movement of the hips. First of all, I wanted to see if her hips yep. flexed, you yep. know, and if they bent and if they moved and where they were um, kind of limited. And she actually, of all things, tended to be a little bit more antiverted in her hips. So she flexed well enough. Internal rotation had a bigger ratio than external rotation. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. So I want to note that in the back of my head because mm -hmm. I don't want to monkey with her structure. I'm going to kind of balance her around it. Right. And, but it started kind of sending off some bells in my head. It was like, okay, but if people are forcing her to do something out of structure in her hips, then that may be why her back is constantly sending mm -hmm. out the alarm bells because yep. something's having to move somewhere because her hips simply can't move into a great deal of external rotation because they're going to be at end range and the hip joint and the anterior surface is going to be at end range and so right. they're not going to be able to go any further so something's going to go somewhere else right right She's going to gain motion above and below those yeah. um structural restrictions that she has so i kept that in mind and thought about that because she certainly didn't stand you know, these things surprise me all the time and I don't know why, but when you look at her, you would never have thought that, right. <laughs> you know, just walking and moving and doing stuff. Yeah. But when you actually break down the movement pattern and you start looking at some of the component parts, that's when it really stuck out. So when I put she, that in the back of my mind and, and kept that. Yeah, go ahead. When she did the lumbar extension, did <clears throat> she, so you said she dropped her head, but did she sort of, you know, do an interior, like do a increase any lordosis or she, or jut her hips for, out, you know, how they try to cheat through that or no? She, no, she didn't. She actually kept her hips pretty still. Okay. And was trying to just, you know, do that upper thoracic back bend over with a very, very flat back. Okay. You know, sometimes I find people who do, I mean, she's just started yoga, but people are, are taught certain movement patterns, like don't do this with your lumbar spine or don't do this. And they don't right. ever, right. you know, with any movement. So it's interesting. Yeah, uh, very strategy. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, one of the things that I did note is that as you take her into internal rotation at the end range or external rotation at the end range that she had, she also had a corresponding uh, lifting and side bending of her trunk. Trunk. Yeah. yeah. So that means to me that the hip doesn't move without the back moving, which Correct. is kind of one of those little things I look at. It's like, oh, the hip should be able to do this yep. without the back being drawn in. We're laying flat on your back. There's no reason for your back to have to be part of this movement pattern. Mm -hmm. But the minute you start getting towards those end ranges, her back would kind of come in with yep. the movement pattern. So um, some discoordination around the lumbopelvic region then and hip. Yeah. So would her back arch or just, it, would it just move? Just kinda, it just kind of like lifted and moved with it. Ah, got it. Okay. You know, so you can kind of imagine, you yep. know, on the opposite side, which she, if she would yep. externally rotate on the right, it'd be the opposite side that would lift up. Got it. If internally rotated on the right, it would be the same side. Same side. Yeah. Got um, it. No, dis no disassociation. Right. Yep. Um, some limitation in her hamstrings, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call them abnormal. Mm -hmm. But for the activities that she's trying to do, um, that kind of made me think this may be why she's not flexing in standing. Yes. Because the hamstrings yes, are for guarding sure. for whatever reason too. So yep. she could get to about 75, you know, okay. but as soon as she got close to that 75, the whole entire lumbar spine and pelvis went into a full tilt and flexion. Yep. Yep. So, you know, if you're going to keep everything still and just, you know, do it, yeah, 70, 75 is about where we could get to. And that, you know, that was a little bit of a struggle there. Mm -hmm. So that made me start thinking about, I wonder what she's doing in Pilates and yoga in some of these positions. Yeah. We flipped over onto tummy and did some PA glides. Um, maybe, maybe a little tenderness, but nothing to, nothing to write home about. Nothing that was going to make me say, oh, hyper irritable joints really no. need to stay away from them. So what I did was I just had her do some hip movements in prone, some internal mm -hmm. and external rotations just to see. And of course, the same thing happened in prone that happened in supine. Mm -hmm. A lot of movement with the back along with the hips. Mm -hmm. And then I just, so I said, let's just try a couple of things. And so I actually had her do a prone push up. Uh -huh, interesting. Yep. We just, you know, we started and just kind of added a little manual, you know, to the L4, L5 as she was kind of going, I just wanted her to feel, I just wanted to see if we could get those joints moving yeah. in a different posture, in a different position. 
And um, they were stiff, but we kind of worked at it. A couple of, you know, repeated movements, um, some McKenzie type. And it didn't cause her any problems. Are you feeling any tightness with this at all? No. Are you feeling any of that need, that, you know, that thing, that thing ringing in your head? Nope. Everything feels great, actually, when I do this. So in- and again, I know that movement always makes her feel better. So that was not unanticipated. I was glad to hear that it wasn't irritable when she was right. doing it. So in this unloaded position, she was able to, with your assistance, articulate and move versus a standing loaded extension. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. Right. So we, we did that. She was still a little stiff, L4, L5. So we just did a manual therapy maneuver, sideline to see if we could bring her into a little bit of closing with some mobilization mm-hmm. and um, see how that mm-hmm. felt. Mm-hmm. And I did that on both sides and I got her back up on her feet. And I, I you know, I said, just lean back now for me. And mm-hmm. what was interesting is that she would really use her, she really used extension. I had her put her hands on her hips and in and, and the first time that I did this, just for everybody to be clear, I looked at this both ways the first time too, just her figuring out how to lean backwards and then me telling her, put your hands on your hips and now lean backwards. And it was the same pattern in the beginning. Now, when she did the lean back, she actually used her, there was actually lovely extension going on in her lumbar spine and it felt good. Nice. So yep. I was like, okay, that's where we kind of did it. You know, mm-hmm. I told her, mm-hmm. I said, this is what you need to do this is your go-to thing when you get up from your chair do some lean backs do this as a warm-up before you go to yoga and pilates you know running you know let's let's get this in there because we're getting great movement in your spine and this is right yeah so and basically we talked about just some basic things on some seated postures and you know what to what to avoid and not to avoid a little bit you know we didn't have a tremendous amount of time to get into the whole yoga and the Pilates stuff. Mm -hmm. So off she went. And um, she also went with instructions that now you know the difference about what I'm asking about what you feel, because we had spent a whole hour working on that. This is what I want you to pay attention to throughout your day. And I want you to come back and be able to tell me, yeah, when I do this, definitely, you know, or if I do this and this, I feel it, but I'm pushing through it. Because I, I had this feeling that it's just this individual that you just soldier on. You don't mm-hmm. stop. You don't change. You just move on. Yep. So a, f- a few weeks later, when her schedule allowed, she came back in. And she said that um, the, the two major things that came up was, number one, the lean, you know, the lean backs. She called them lean backs, but the standing extension stuff yep. really feel good. Mm-hmm. I like those, but I still feel like I need to stretch my back out. And it's like, okay, so in what positions and what stuff makes you really feel that way? And so she said, well, I've kind of solved my problem at work sitting. I've changed my chair and moved things around a little bit. So I don't feel it as much there. So I said, just show me how you sit at work, the old way and the new way. So she did. And the new way just had her out So the old way was to sit back kind of slumped and like look into the screen. Mm -hmm. The new way was to, she just kind of moved herself a little bit more forward and raised the screen up. She figured this out on her own, which was Mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. And so it just offered her more variability of movement because she said, now I could lean back, I could lean forward. And you had said that the more I could move around, the better. So, Mm -hmm. so she did that. So that was good. Um, We talked a little bit about stooping. That's still a real problem for her to stand in a stooped forward position. So we worked on some things to help with that, bring her legs apart a little bit, soften the knees some, you'd be able to do some different things around stooping. But the biggest thing is to do a few lean backs in between. So don't Mm -hmm. stay stooped until it really, really is bugging the, the you know the the crud out of you you know start when you first start getting those inklings that's when you need to kind of move and change a little bit so the biggest thing was that I wanted to get to and I know that you're itching to get to it too she said when I sit on the floor Mm. yoga and Pilates Uh, she does a Pilates mat class I said okay Okay. finally let's get to it yeah so you can imagine what's going on is you know her hamstrings are a little and I'm not going to say that they're tight but for whatever reason, they're overworking, yep. you know, because um, mm-hmm. th- they could change pretty fast and we got mm-hmm. them to change pretty fast. Not great, but, you know, she's never done this kind of stuff before, mm-hmm. yoga and Pilates. She's always been just a straight up runner and, you know, 
just has kind of pushed her way through her day. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff is new. So she's never been in these positions or postures before this last year. Mm. We'll get your input here in just a minute. But basically what it was, was, you know, sit on the floor, Taylor sit on the floor for me. And, wow. you know, she couldn't do it. She goes, there, I feel that in my back. She could tailor sit. <laughs> I mean, she couldn't. I don't she think could. I could tailor sit. <laughs> right. On the floor, she couldn't yeah. tailor sit. Her knees were up and it yeah. was all, you know, all this yeah. extra movement in her lumbar yeah, spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I said, so, you know, so we started, it folded up a couple of blankets, sit on this. Of course, mm -hmm. it was much easier. We just yep. kept raising her up until we got her in a position that that felt good. Yep. And I wanted her to feel the difference between what it feels like with this and what it feels like with this. And what she's mm -hmm. doing is she's continuing to push into those positions because she thinks if she stretches through, she'll be able to do it. And she, her hamstrings aren't changing. Her hips aren't going to change because remember, she's a little bit antiverted. So she's never yeah. going to tailor sit no. with her no. knees flat on the floor. No. It's never no. going to happen. No. But, you know, once you can get them to understand that. Yep then it's good. So we did that. We did that along, you know, some of the different kinds of activities and exercises that she would do, you know, the ones where you have, where you sit, long sit, and your arms are up in the air, and you're doing mm -hmm. the different things. And it was like, you have to bring your hips up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, because she couldn't long sit without it just no. only being lumbar flexion. Yeah. Because her pelvis yeah. was just being pulled down. Posteriorly, yeah. And she couldn't overcome that. So it was like, we got to get your hips up so that you can get into a little bit better posture that isn't giving you that, that, symptom that you keep yep. feeling yes so we did a lot of those um we did a lot of things like that to help um we talked about some different positions especially the warrior poses and triangle pose i'm not a, a yoga guru my partner is um i probably you know i'm not a you know yoga master my partner spends a lot of time with yoga so i can lean on her and ask her a lot of questions like What's supposed to happen with this? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, but I know enough about movement to know that you don't, you know, when you do this, if it gives you that symptom, we have to change it. Yeah. You know, and I know that when you get in a class situation, everybody wants to look like the person in front of the class. Yeah. And they all will really strain their bodies. And depending upon who's instructing them, we'll tell them, we'll just push through it or breathe through it. Well, in her case, this has been going on for so long that it's not changing with the way that she's been instructed. Mm -hmm. So she's going to have to start changing some other things in order to be able to continue to pursue and feel comfortable. I never told her not to go to yoga class. I asked her to consider these props. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because they don't want to be the person in the class that has to get the blanket and get the blocks. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yes, you know, because yes, the yes. class is a little bit high level yep. and it's competitive. So, so I gave her some guidelines. I said, you know, if in class you don't want to do this, then here's some other ways to manipulate the movement pattern. Mm -hmm. So with long sitting, don't sit up so tall, put your hands back behind you and do some work that way. So that way you can get, you can still get the benefit of the movement pattern mm -hmm. without going into something that's giving you your symptoms. Yep. So we did some stuff like that and I encouraged her to work at home with the blocks and the blankets and the things like that. Yeah. Yep. I said, you have your own little yoga practice that you do at home or some of your Pilates exercises or whatever you do. This might be a really good time to use all of those and you know, kind of mm -hmm. just see how you feel with it and make sure you feel good when you can be quiet and more mindful. Mm -hmm. It's always one of those things because they say, well, I want to do what I need to do to get better, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> exactly. And the body you takes choose. the path of least Yeah. 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 And I, so I just gave her a choice and I said, here, here are some great choices for you. You choose what's going to work the best for you. Yeah. And then her other, you know, or then their third thing is, well, maybe I just won't do that anymore. And that's a choice too. I don't want to yeah discourage people from movement right and if she likes it the class works for her and it works for her time and stuff i'd like for it to get to you know be something that she can do if yep. she decides that that's not the place for her because it doesn't it keeps driving her symptoms then she'll figure that out i yep. don't want to be the one that you know waves the finger and says don't ever do such and such because that's not going to help no that's red right, right? That's and we don't really yeah. yeah all i know is that if it bothers you here then we need then the best thing i think is let's change that yeah. modify it to where you can do it and it doesn't bother you yep. so here's the other thing that i did and i decided that i wanted to help her gain some of her motions up above too because she was complaining also of her shoulders hurting just a little bit more so 
we did some other stuff. We could get, you know, her back to change out of a different position. It was pretty easy to show her that freedom of movement that her shoulders gave her. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a never sit like this or never do that. But it was like, consider that if you can be a little bit more movable here, it makes you a little bit more movable up here. Yep. And so, you know, we just kind of played around with that just a little bit. And part of that was coming from her yoga and Pilates stuff because she was feeling like, and it finally came out at the end that she was feeling like that if she didn't tuck her bum and really over grip her abs, that she was in a position that wasn't going to work for yoga or Pilates. Mm. Ah, that's that posterior pelvic tilt, tuck mm -hmm. your bum. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, yeah. So we, yeah. you know, I kind of spent some time with her and discussed yeah. that it's a balance, you yeah. know, that, that sometimes they coach it because some people who aren't good at moving don't understand how to bring things on and so sometimes they hear things a certain way because they've seen that so much in their classes I said for you it's it's actually the opposite mm -hmm. you need to have a little bit more of a balance so that you have the variability of movement both ways because whenever you do that and I had her do that in a, in a sitting you know kind of a modified long sitting position I said go into that posture that they want that you know you think you're supposed to be in and she did and it immediately brought her symptoms on yeah. It was like, so it's not that what you're doing is wrong. It's just that it's not serving you right now with your symptoms. So let's right. see if we can't get that to change a bit to, to move better. So anyway, yeah. um, long story short, she's going to be, you know, she's better. Definitely. Um, she's going to be coming in to see me again. Um, we've been talking a lot by email because she's super busy and it's just hard for us to find times that work. She has to come a pretty good distance to see me. Mm-hmm. But her last email said, I just, I still want to have exercises that's going to get rid of this chronic thing that I feel like I need this, this chronic tightness in my low back. Okay. And so now she's thinking about having some imaging done and looking at, I, I don't know, she mentioned maybe following through on an injection or something else. So anyway, that's kind of where I am with her. I'd love your input because I'm kind of at... I've done most of all of my good tricks here. Yes, I know. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a time thing and I keep reinforcing <coughs> thing, but I'd yeah. love to, you know, have some other um, yeah, it's hard. directions into this, you know, yeah. just to figure out if there's some other ways I can offer her. To yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, since she's very interesting, it's very hard. I find that when people don't come in consistently at the beginning, because you can make them feel better in the in the office, but then they'll walk around the block and resort to an old strategy, and then they keep doing that until they see you two weeks later, and there's no, and they, and, and they come back and like, well, I still feel this, but. I think as the physical therapist, we need to give them, under, make them understand that you need to understand what your strategy is or, or something that, that what you're doing. If you're going to start a new exercise program, we need to give you something like, like a barometer, whether, and then mm -hmm. it can't be a subjective, oh, I, it hurts type of thing that is subjective at an objective movement that you can test to see if that activity did make you worse, so to speak. So like with her, with, with the posterior pelvic tilt, it's almost like they have like this gripping strategy nonstop. And mm -hmm. the only time I, I have a patient of mine, she has a significant, I mean, she's got a lordosis, like you could ski down her back. It is, it is that she's had it forever. And the only time I've ever given someone, you know, and she can't recruit her abdominals to save her life. And because uh, the pull of the lordosis is so strong, I actually have her in a down dog position against the wall, doing a posterior pelvic tilt and just bending and straightening her knees. And that literally recruits her abdominals. So I'm just bringing that in because sometimes, um, just for the listeners, starting something in a posterior pelvic tilt is, is okay. But a lot of people, and I see a lot of patients like this, they're constantly doing this. And we've talked about this many times on the podcast, but it's not a normal strategy for someone mm -hmm. walking down the street. It's compressive to yeah. the spine. And that is, could be part of her problem. With the, when she tailor sat, did she, the minute she got into the position, did she go, I mean, did it was like, boom, that I feel it right there. It, like it, 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 it took a second for her to settle in. You know, so it wasn't like the, the second she got into the position, but as she sat there for oh, about 15, 20 seconds, then she would okay. start to say, because she was fiddling with her hips, trying to figure out, you know, telling me I can't get my hips down and this and this. And it was like, okay, but. Yeah. So the only way she could. 
Yes, the only way she could do that was to try to, you know, extend her lumbar spine, right? Is is that how I'm saying? Well, she was, the only way that she could sit, she kept her knees up because her hips just aren't going to allow them to go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she couldn't extend up because her hips were in the way, you know, Ah, so she stayed into that, that, that chronic, you know, flexed position ah, there at the lumbosacral area okay, yeah got it got it, got yeah it. so like because running is really different as a really i mean it's standing it's extension you know extension her mm-hmm. rotation seemed pretty good when she got into did you look at a low low squat at all in any of the i did i so, did and um she stayed so as she goes into a squat if she doesn't bring her feet in so if she tries to go into a squat with like a two o'clock and ten o'clock kind of external yeah. rotated position of her feet yeah the kind of the way it's coached so to speak she definitely flexes and drops her trunk forward to get down because she can't do it any other way because her she hips can't. don't let her as soon as i take her out of that position and get her feet going straight ahead she's able to, to come down much easier so if we even come in just slightly towards 11 o'clock and uh one o'clock on the opposite sides you know just a little bit of internal rotation she can actually handle it pretty nicely she never really goes into extension though right what um, about you know, she stay. I mean, she can stay straight and come down, but as soon as she gets below the hip, below the knees, she drops into a posterior tilt. Right. I'm. Sh- what about like the you know the all fours position? Yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. She did. I did put her in all fours, and of okay. course, as soon as she goes back into downward dog or even wild child, you know, for those of you who don't know what that is. So it's it's on all fours and you're just dropping your hips back to your heels. So you're just yeah, doing a, like you know, a backward, a backward yeah. forward stretch thing. So those things all put her into that kind of um, overflexed. Well, I shouldn't say overflexed, but into that, you know, that end range flexion position. Mm-hmm. When we had, when I had her kneel and bring her feet apart from each other so that she was in relatively internal rotation yep. and she came back, she could do it so much better with a uh, flatter back, which was really good. Okay. So, and, her, yeah. and when she was on all fours, her hips flexed appropriately. Like when she went down into the, when we put her, space. when we put her into a little bit of internal, rotation. internal rotation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Got the it. way I, the way I cope with that usually is if it's external rotation, they need, I have them bring their feet together. Yep. You know, if it's internal, I have them bring their feet a little bit yeah. further apart yeah. to, to yeah. kind of bias that position. Yeah. And um, so though that worked very, very well for her with that, we were able to change that. And we also did uh, the, you know, downward facing dog, whatever Mm -hmm. that, you know, that pike position. Yep. And I had her put her hands up on two blocks against the wall. Yep. um, To lift her body up a little bit and to bring her up into a little bit better hip flexion. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if she tried to go down her hamstrings, you know, just the position of her hips and and the guarding of the hamstrings, particularly it looked like the medial hamstring just weren't going to let that happen well yeah. without her there her compensation was immediately to go into lumbar sacral flexion yeah i mean those and hamstrings so, are, are pulling yeah. her into that posterior right tilt. right Sometimes, and i think and i think it's they're, they're protecting the hip correct frankly, you know i it's the medial hamstrings are the ones and i think it's just making sure the hips are staying out of end range mm-hmm. and so stretching the hamstrings isn't going to make it better yeah you know? so yeah the driver here as you can imagine for me wasn't really what was going on in the back was the my I think the the big driver here is you know the hips the yes. structure of her hips yes I agree and that seems to be driving everything so getting her to focus and balance around that has been the biggest challenge right so sometimes what I do with people who get on all four sometimes I'll actually start them in like extension like a little bit of lordosis mm-hmm. and like and to see if they can actually and then watch their strategy as they're going down onto their onto mm-hmm. their bum and then I'll I'll have them go go back up and then I'll have them try to do like a little side bend in that position like a hip hike just to see how what their strategy is on all fours because clearly if she can go into that with her hips wider and more internally rotated right then 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 her back's not the issue it's it's the strategy she's using with her hips so mm-hmm. I'm just thinking in terms of like when she when she bends forward is there like, did you put her, sometimes I have, I know this is crazy, but sometimes I put um, like a half foam roller under their heels 
to see it to just to see if it changes their strategy with the hamstrings, like takes the tension off the hamstrings and see mm. if they can do that. Or sometimes like I know walking, you know, is probably not a major problem for her. It wasn't the thing that set it off. I just like to see people d- walk backwards and see if they what their strategy is in terms of just going backwards because clearly you want her to extend more without you know overworking certain body parts and over you know going into the more extending more through the thoracic spine so it's almost like let's assume that her driver is her hips because it it sounds like it is because you can change her strategy with changing her hip position so you're we're not going to be able to change the structure of her hips however we can change the context right of how she Mm -hmm. flexes her hips so i'm love figuring you know like all these creative little things out now i i would probably have her do stuff in all fours extension flexion i would just make it up as i go along you know Mm -hmm. start an extension and have her have her go down to once and have her go down to another side to see if she can play with with her hip strategy yeah, you know. but so the 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 extension and and all fours the the hill you know raising the hills up and seeing how that looks a little bit particularly for some of her yoga stuff it might be something I can convince her to do right um, as well as exploring the edge as she kind of moves side to side and some different things those are great things because I'm definitely going to have to get her back in to kind of still keep getting her to understand yeah. that it's not a stretch problem. I right. mean, I feel, I under, I get what she's feeling and I understand that the only way that people have is they think it's a strategy of stretching that's going to get them out of it. Right, right. And it really needs to be more of a variability of movement, I think, in my opinion. Um, yeah. yeah. And I wanted to, to, I just didn't quite get as good of a buy-in there as I wanted, but, but I got enough that she made some good changes and she definitely hasn't had another, like, big pain experience like she did before and I know she's been traveling so that's that's those are really positive things but I just like to get her past this chronic tightness that she keeps discussing so that can get that to change better that'd be great yeah what about getting into a like a a little like a mini squat and having her do I call this chicken legs where you're squatting and you're just moving your hips in in and out of internal and external rotation Mm -hmm. and see what happens to her back yeah that'd be good you know so just a squat and then just go internal external just see if she comes out of the lordosis if she goes into flexion because you're moving so I think ultimately is what you want to do is change the variable you know that we want to keep changing is the position of our hips right. um so you know you so it's different context so all fours have her go into a squat and do some chicken legs back and forth internal external rotation um i would do standing you can play go on the heels you can play with the the the, the foot position there backwards doing some backwards stuff that, that may flare her up a little bit but you know trying to see if she can do anything, you know, it'd be interesting to see her do a backwards lunge because mm-hmm. when you step back in yoga, you're doing that. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, step, you're stepping back and you're rotating. And I think seeing if she steps back into a, you know, a lunge and see if she, see how she compensates, compensates with that because that's changing the hip position there, right? One is mm-hmm. forward, one is backwards. That's, that's how I would start. I, it's, I I think we're often taught a lot of times is to go into unloaded on your supine position, but I, she's probably beyond that at this point. You know, I think getting her into like, like because you squat and you, and you lunge generally all different variations on a daily basis, you know, from sitting and then reaching and things like that. You almost want to see if she changes her strategy with different contexts of movement with the hip. Mm-hmm. Also in yoga, there's a, a prayer pose or a chair yeah. pose. So she, so if she, you put your hands, you're almost like lengthening the latch. You want to see if that, if she can do that and do a little squat. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just trying to throw the arms into it because yoga involves a ton of arms. Yeah, so absolutely. So you could even just incorporate some arm movement after you look at some of these other movements and just see if that changes it. And then eventually I would probably look at rotation just because – yoga is 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 not straight plane and running isn't either running is rotation but yeah I, I do think that I would play with the position of the hips to start and I would do it in different contexts all fours the 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 salsa I would ha- the lumbar I would have her stand on the half foam roll I, you know I would I would actually have her walk back you know do a backwards lunge just mm-hmm. to see what it looked like 
and then you could even have her do like uh, against you know you can have her do the, the chicken squat uh, uh, out not on a wall but you could also have her just lean back against the wall and see if she does it better because oh, she's more she's stabilized there you said your rotation was fine for her, right? You did the body twisting and she was good. No, no, no problems. Well, there were a few, a few, they weren't, they weren't major, you know, yeah. and yeah. rotational activity is still good to her with her walking and with her stuff. You see some good movement going on in her spine. Yeah. It's these other movements that are no bueno. Yeah. I mean, I would alter the position of the hips in the squat. You know, I would see and even have her do like an assisted squat with the TRX and see if mm -hmm. she can, if she can do something like that. Uh, because clearly the hip is the main issue and yeah. you just need to be creative and think of ways to change the position of the hips mm -hmm. and, and get, get the, and, and get the buy-in when you change the position of the hips as it takes her symptoms away. I'm always big on starting with squats just because I think there's, there's such a common activity of daily living mm -hmm. and you can easily, and then the all fours is, you know, a really easy exercise to do. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's jumping out at me to start. Sounds good. Yeah. You know, so this will be interesting. You'll have to keep this posted. <laughs> I definitely will. I definitely. Like I said, I think the biggest, the biggest barrier has been we've, we've tried to stay in communication as much as possible, but yeah. this, we have, you, you only have limited time. You have to do the best you can with the limited time that yeah. you have. So, yeah. um, but it's, it's, it's interesting because when you think, well, they're doing this and they're doing this and they're moving like this and moving like this, don't see them anymore. And it's like, mm, she's not happy with where she is. Yeah, I know. It's you tough know? when you don't have that, that, that consistency. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes, you know, I like to try and, and say, is there one activity that you can check? Like for hips and things like that. Um, like, like I have a patient now, she, you know, her hip is the issue and, and it bothers her after her run and we're slowly getting her back to running. So I'm like, after a mile, stop and do a squat and do your hip internal external rotation. If that feels good, you're good to go. If that doesn't feel good, then that, that one mile was too much. So I mean, you almost want to find something mm -hmm. that like, we call it a reset exercise. It's almost like you want to, not a reset, like I said, I learned this with LJ, self-check, something that she can, that, that tests the driver. Like there is a movement that tests the hips. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is, you know, squatting with hip internal as a practical, easy thing to yeah, do. Yeah, that's, you know? that's, a, that's a good point because I was using the lean backs as her um, self-check. Try like, figure, you know, try doing, doing squat. Day, yeah, when you're doing, when she's doing her day stuff, the lean backs are her go-to things to say, you know, yes, that feels better. I need, I need to. Well, you know, that would be a good reset. Uh, like if, uh, that would be maybe a good reset for her. Like as, so for example, the self-check has to test the driver, has to be sensitive to the driver. Yeah. So I wasn't doing anything with the hips. Yeah. That's a good right. point. So mm -hmm. I would, I would figure that out. She can go through her workout or whatever and check that even midway through yoga and see, okay, well that move bothered it. And then you could pinpoint down that what's, what, what is exactly bothering her. You know right. what I mean? Right. Got it. Got it. Good okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Totally loved it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thanks yes. for listening. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, we look forward to your comments and your thoughts and I have nothing yeah. else left to yeah. say other than yeah, we, thanks, Erica, for your time and your expertise oh, and letting me walk through this um, person that has um, been a bit befuddling to me. So this is great. I know. I think people, you know, we present a lot of these cases and yes, we've had success with these cases. There are, there are, there are, are patients that we, we all struggle with and I, I, it, it's good to, 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 to talk about ones that you're seeing now that we're struggling with because talking like this makes us better and makes us get these patients better. So it's not all about, you know, treating, this is my success story because, right. you know, no one gets everybody better. It, yeah. it just doesn't happen. <laughs> no, nope. sometimes anyway. we need input from somebody yeah. else too, to see the, the forest from the trees. So exactly. greatly appreciated. Thanks, oh, Thanks everyone. Bye. Have a, have a great day.